Lawrence, what are we playing? A <sighs> medieval, the coolest game ever made. <laughs> I know, you've already told us. <laughs> <laughs> but we lost the audio. That's okay. Now. What's cool about it? Can we get a really quick recap? Whoa! You're about to- uh, The Whoa, corrupt spirit is, is here! Fight? No time! I must slay the corrupt spirit! <laughs> I mean, it's convenient that the game ah! just got cool. I was gonna say, Lawrence didn't actually know that we were I supposed knew. to be recording. I, or ow. not. The whole rest of this game has just been him sort of running around on a rooftop with a trident. He thought that we were just oh, coming into the room to watch him do what he was going to do on his lunch Isn't break. Isn't that what this job is? You guys watch me do cool shit. That's true. A lot uh, of times it is. And this is very cool, so it's all working out. You give me a lot of help. Yo! Oh, Jesus. He's okay, mad. so there are boss fights. He I see that now. Ice. Oh, that oh, wasn't, that was yeah. that wasn't I, I don't know that this one's working because it seems like it's hitting the obstacles. Generous waste of mana. It's doing some damage, but you're right. You got to get in the eye. Switch to the very much like gun. how the planets orbit. No, you, you have to get in the Bill. The as Bill Paxton would say, let's get in the eye. Ugh. Let's make sure a uh, perfectly capable wo woman can't do the job unless a man is there to strap her down. Yeah. Incels, you say? <laughs> yeah. Speaking of incels, mm. sorry, we were talking about incels before this. Aren't we always? Oh, oh no, fuck, it, hits, it keeps hitting bricks on the way. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Son there's the bricks. Yeah. Stop hitting! Yeah. Okay, what is that? When it when it goes warpy, is that you yeah, yeah. or something? That's his his fire alt firing, the purple ribbon gun, which yes, is like the BFG. Oh, he's okay. black hole. Oh, it did fuck. a lot of damage. Fuck! Uh, all right, all right, all right. I can't uh, tell the, what the, the fuck ground is going. lava and also hurting you. It looks like the world is changing, but I have no idea. That's fine. Don't worry about it. It's just a ow, Solnado. He's throwing some stuff at me. Whoa! Solnado is a great way to describe that. I stole it from Mortal Kombat. Soul NATO sounds oh. like I got the Voltride. A band, like, of like, Ow. kids in high school, but for some reason, instead of being into Weezer or Blink 182 or other things that kids in high school are generally mm -hmm. into, they're into like, like, R&B and like, oh, yeah. like they're just like from a completely different time. Soul NATO. And they're called Soul NATO. I feel like Soul NATO could be a genre of its own. Ooh. If you mix maybe soul Nadecore. with ska. <laughs> is about there the a difference? <laughs> yeah. It's the song of my people. I don't know what that sounds like. Yeah. It sounds heavenly. All right. What is that? Mana boost. Oh. I guess it gives you everything. Oh, now you just have more mana in general? It's yeah. filling up all your little Am colored ball bars on the side. Yeah. Is it? My mana bars. Dope. Uh, there's four kinds of mana that correspond to all of the yeah, various weapons of the game. Of there's axe, the axe of might cleave. Yep, that's you, it. You and have then, unlimited mana on the axe? Oh, shit. Of course you do. It's an axe. What are you going to do? It's a, it's, a it's, a, it's a good point. It's an axe. It's a good point. It's an axe. Yeah. You got the staff. Ah. Oh, oh, 200 health. Oh, yeah. I'm saving up for that. Got the uh, staff of uh, Sapphiricus. Yep. That's what that is. The... The sword of ca ca cut slash. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, earlier when you were like mocking him about pushing yeah. up your glasses, I've learned that that doesn't mock, mock no. him. He doesn't understand it, it as mocking. It makes he me just says, like, oh yeah, I should push up my glasses <laughs> so I can read better. Or I also uh, <laughs> I can't find my glasses. Friend. The glasses that I was wearing for Drunky 3, I can't find them. I don't know where they went. I lost a bottle too. Well, that's something. I don't remember leaving. Oh. Really? No recollection of leaving or getting to you my apartment. You were pretty coherent. No recollection. Hmm. Jeez. And also, I've had people criticize me the past week because I like clearly misremembered something from a trailer, and it was like, "How dare you?" I mean, you? yeah, I was drunk. <laughs> How dare you? You're like, you were wrong about this. I'm like, I don't remember that happening. Next year, what we should do is we should all hire an assistant. Each of us gets an assistant, okay. and then that assistant has to stay sober the whole time, mm -hmm. so that way when people call us out on things we weren't paying attention to while we were drunk, Whoa. the assistant- Just yells, they we were drunk! Yeah, we can refer to our assistant who will then back us up. Is mm -hmm. that a wall? It's or a can portal. You walk in. Portal to the nether do it. Do it. nether realm. Did you do it? I completed the ancient sanctuary, Ooh, but I no did not secrets, find the though. secret. No secrets though, that's embarrassing. Got some, got some awards though. Killed all enemies, found all messages because there weren't any. I'm pretty good at this. Sweet. Pretty good at this How game. How many levels are there of this game? Whoa, Whoa. boy. Thank you. Oh, finally, a woman that appreciates you for all the skills that you have. Yes. Sh being a champion, shooting eye natos. Ah, finish the sacred path. Yes, of course. On Is to the this next. like a hub world? Yeah. What gladiators considered attractive by women, do you think? Oh, yeah. For women like, yeah. oh, my God. Oh, yeah. He could die at any point. Listen, I've seen Spartacus mm -hmm. all four seasons. Ooh. The arcane expanse. And if there's one thing Holy noble shit. women love, it's banging gladiators. Mm. That you could go to, like, gladiator brothels and pay good money to bang a gladiator. Wait, really? Yeah. 
Whoa. You're like, he's, he's the champion. I want to bang that guy. And Holy bang shit. Him. Cool. And the gladiator would have to do it. Does he get a cut? Or he would die. Well, I imagine so. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Gladiators are pretty much slaves, so probably not necessarily. Also true. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, jump oh, over oh. there. Okay, that was close. Aha! This is the staff of you have Hieronicus. Oh. You have all the weapons in the game, all seven? They, no, they. every time you start a new chapter, they reset you. It's oh. like classic shooters. Yeah, you gotta get them all again. That way they can control the challenge. Oh, we got some atmospheric music happening. Oh, 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 wow. I just can't believe a game for the Sega Saturn looks this good. <laughs> I know. They really, they really worked on the frame rate. I got that RAM expansion, so mm -hmm. we are cruising now. What the fuck are you? What? Who are those? A little, little mystic some person. Kind, you know yeah, what? some kind of mage. You know what else this game reminds me of? Something you'd find in a Dave and Buster's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you, you. this one doesn't necessarily give you tickets, but it still, for some reason, costs $6 to play for yeah. three yeah. minutes. Yeah. You oh man, this would have slayed. You can't that. save it because it wants you to give it your initials, but a thousand people have already put their initials in, mm -hmm. so it just gets confused. Yeah, and you're like, "What's the deal? My name is Cap." <laughs> Crystal Borgs, no way. I remember the first time that I, and only time I went Jeez. to a Dave and Buster's what? was for a, I mean, I'm foreign. It was for a meetup, and uh, we played some some games, and they had cheese on like the joysticks oh and so i never went again oh well that's a shame very much dorito-y cheesy joysticks that's that's a that's a i'm gonna say that's a bad dave and buster's experience that's normally normal. it's other things on the joystick yeah. cheese is not great mm. it's a seminal fluid or yeah it could be something else could be anything don't else. don't let that burn you dave and buster's great especially if you go on wednesday when it's half price game night yeah which basically means all the games cost how much they would they should, should cost. reasonably cost yeah it's fucking popping in Dave and Buster's on a Wednesday night. Let me tell you. Didn't they bring that Halo game to Dave and Buster's? They There's had a, a bunch Halo of arcade game that I think was I, exclusive to Dave and Buster's. I think. It may be exclusive to Dave and Buster's. I'm, there's this weird arcade down by the Santa Monica Pier that has a bunch of strange shit. Man. Mm -hmm. And I think it's there too. Oh, really? Impressive. I've yeah. been there. Oh, I think you can dodge me, Snake? Haha! -ha. <laughs> I didn't really try. Kill me. No, so get every me now and then you, you press a button. Are those just to get lifts to come to you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Or to open Don't doors. You. you know, whatever. Whatever. Gosh, look at that. They got reflections in video games now. Cool. Do they? That actually... Oh, yeah. I don't like that the tiles look better than everything else. Yeah, I know. Tone it down. Well, it it's is like, it's still pixelated. That's... I guess. Here's one of the cool things about this game, of many cool things cool. about this game, <laughs> is that even though it's like running in high resolution on modern, modern rendering shit, they still make everything really pixelated. So mm -hmm. like the edge of the sword is not rendered in like 1080p, even mm -hmm. though the game engine is running in that. Yeah. Mm. All the all the textures are still super pixelated, even though they're really crisp and look really good. Well, uh, also that it's running at whatever 60 frames a second. Yeah, 1 and, million frames a second. And all the bad guys look like polygon messes. <laughs> messes. Oh, I need the silver key. Just defended him a little. I did, I know, but a little bit. he's right. I appreciate the look of this game, even though it's something I never want to look at. <laughs> I appreciate that it exists. Could it leave, please? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I Never. want to burn it all with fire. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I curl up next to it. I got my big box, my big 90s PC box. Oh, the Swiggle Swerve. Hiya! God, oh, that thing's cool. <laughs> oh, that's your old fire for the axe. Yeah. Oh, it's not going to no, cut down any trees. <laughs> you can do that forever? Oh, wait, no, until your bar yeah, runs out. Yeah, timer runs out. If you keep picking up souls, though, it extends your time. Meaning you can get a kill gasm. I just you made that up. Keep picking up souls in extends time. It, does? it doesn't bother yeah, him. Right. He's just like that's how I sound. He this just is, hears it as normal. Yeah. This it's, is what this is my this is what I've learned after years in the incel subreddit is that you just have to own it. You just have to own it. Mm -hmm. I think that that means that you've won more than any of them have won. <laughs> it's true. I have. Like ah! that, that, I think that makes you not an incel. Also, you have a girlfriend. Well, you know. He doesn't have sex with her though. Yeah. <laughs> I respect her too much to have sex with her. I respect women too much to have sex with them. He has to choose between his allegiance as an incel and the love of his girlfriend. But you and can't the, be an incel if it's a choice. Them's I think, the, I think the you've breaks. just hit the core of the issue there. Alana. So then, okay, so then he told her on their first date, yeah. you have to never allow me to have sex with you, I no matter how much I deserve it. Or maybe wink, wink. he's so... So far gone uh -huh. that even if she tries to have sex with him, oh. he's like, "No, of course you don't want it because I'm a man yeah. and you hate men, etc." And, she, and Stephanie's just like, "I don't know what the problem is." I guess that's a good point because the idea of it being a choice is I mean, sure pretty knows. much nonsense for everyone there anyway. 
they just say that it's not a choice, but it is a choice. Yeah. So I've done a lot Stop of research about it. Uh, weirdly, like the the incel culture was started by a woman who actually just wanted a constructive like. Uh, positive place for people who couldn't get dates and stuff like oh, wow. in the late 90s mm-hmm. and it was actually that for a while uh, but then all the fucking weirdos came in and sort of took over and made it just like this hateful toxic place well it's like yeah. it's like red pill in the matrix yeah like yeah. wake up to the reality of the world yeah but that's not really what they were going for they so were I, making yeah. a science fiction movie there was a VR company at uh, E3 it was like red pill VR yeah, that was not the best. It was thing. like, oh, all right. That's Either a they knew you made and with that's your bad, name. or they didn't know, and that's also bad. Yeah, maybe do a little research into your name. Speaking mm-hmm. of research, I finally looked up specifically what red pill means. Okay. It's kind of interesting. Okay. All right. It's essentially the concept that women only ever date up. No woman will ever date somebody that's like less attractive than them. Interesting. Um, yeah. So, because of that, there is a disproportionate a focus of sexual privilege given to the like top 20% of men mm. whereas the bottom 80% are screwed women being evil as they are would never deign to date somebody this, who has any minor physical imperfections this d- this hold on that argument completely goes out the window when you consider other false arguments that women only want money uh, right how can you how can you resolve uh, both of those at the that? same time when it's like you I have a, a Melania Trump type situation. Oh, there well. are names for it. It's I think that's is that Beta Bucks? <laughs> well, like you can look max and ah, oh, I think I think it's like it's wage maxing. I think is yeah. What you like I think the idea you max is that out a stat. But is it just like hey, we made this thing that's a rule, but it's not a rule? Yeah, it's well, like it's, they have RPG law. There is yeah, there is. Well, you can enumerate um like two. It's funny because it's it's a pure man's vision of the world, but the idea that every woman evaluates a man mathematically, uh-huh. and so looks and stature are part of it. Wealth is too a societal uh-huh. stature. All uh-huh. those things kind of compute into an attractiveness score. Uh-huh. But the thing is, like every no woman, and and I think there's actual like people have come up with equations because nerds. Um, every woman will like always go thirty percent above their attractiveness score in the world because they have a vagina and therefore power. Because okay. um, that's, you know, women have it's always the had the equivalent power. of power. That's that's always been the case. Okay, so yeah. question, because this is a thing that I never pay attention to. You know, some some I feel like I mostly Oops. see guys talk about it. They'll be like, oh, well, the girl that I'm with is more attractive than me or less attractive than me. And you'll, like, I never assess that. I never look at someone and I'm like, you are more or less no, attractive than me when I'm dating them. Well, do people do that a lot? Alana, you don't realize you do, but you do. Shit. That's the thing. <laughs> Human beings don't have control over these types of things. They're just monsters. Well, <laughs> it is I an mean, awfully pessimistic case. view of the world, isn't it? But I, I feel like I've heard people talk about that a fair bit. And they're like, well, I mean, I know that this person is more attractive than I am or whatever with their partner. I'm like, why would you even think about that? I don't know. It's it requires a very immature perspective on what attraction actually is. A also pure true. looks based thing or hey, can you have a good conversation with this person? Do they share similar interests? Do you like what they do for a living or their goals for their life? There's a lot of things that go into what attraction actually should mean. But when you isolate it to the most basic definition, then yes. You're bound to be wrong. <laughs> Let's go to Dave and Buster's and cruise for incels. We should. And just, like, take them under our wing. You Kay. think you could convert an incel, Lawrence? I've tried. How'd it go? Poorly. Did you only try I mean, online? Well, it's, that perspective it's, is the true. thing is, like, people don't become incels because they want, they actually want to improve themselves. They become incels because they want an excuse about to how To not improve themselves. Going. Exactly. Correct, yeah. They want to be told it's out of their Seven control. Health. Shit. Shit. Oh, boy. I almost insulted myself there. Uh, don't shoot the moon at me. Okay. Yeah, I wow. like that they, they let it eclipse before they shoot it at you. That's that was pretty. Nice. That's pretty metal. Oh fuck! Wow. Yeah, that was close. He almost got me with his his needles of con. He's like conjuring. A, he's like a non-canon don't. X-Men villain. <laughs> <laughs> They're all non-canon at this point. That's oh, he's true. dead. Okay. Oh, whew, close one. So you tried to take an incel under your wing and change his I mean, worldview, but you weren't able to change his worldview. I mean, no, nah, well, not a specific one. I kind of view myself as more of a, an inspiration, if you will. That's fair. That's to fair. to the world. Yeah. Um, and occasionally somebody will come at me with some hot fire on Twitter, and I'll I'll try to talk it through them with them. Uh-huh. But it's pretty easy to tell, you know, in conversation whether somebody actually wants to exchange ideas or they're just trying to convince you that they're right. Yeah. It's one of those things where like it's all it all boils down to insecurity. If, uh, Three health. Oh, you got God. it. He's behind you. If your worldview isn't isn't great, then you need a bunch of ah shit. Then you need oh. a bunch of people to sort of agree with you, so you feel more secure. 
That's why churches exist. Boom! Lighten them up. I don't. That's probably a little too deep for this. Video. I don't know that they uh they want people to agree with them. I think that they just want to have an angry stance and like be able to yell it. Like some people don't actually so, want to convince. I know. What about you? all the YouTubers who just argue. do this? I mean, they're Can you just. You believe it? <laughs> God. YouTubers are the uh, yeah. YouTubers are hard to qualify because they're all. 90% of their motivation is for popularity or money. Yeah. But you know it us. But yeah. people watch like it because we they want us. that solidarity. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're just friendship simulators. That's not so insidious. We're just convincing people to stay inside and not form real human bonds. This is getting weird. <laughs> I think it. I do. I would argue. Ah! I would argue in our defense that ours was a unintentional passive result of what we were doing, which was hanging out with our friends and doing, making things that we were, thought we enjoyed. That's true. Um, so I do think you guys consider yourselves YouTubers? I do not. I, well, I understand either. if someone people, if someone would come up to me and describe it as such. Yeah. I do. I do cringe every single time, like a family friend or something like that introduces me to someone else as a YouTuber. Yeah. It's gotten to the point now where it's more like, he's like a YouTube person. Guy. <laughs> yeah. Because they think of the connotation of the term. He does YouTube. Um. But uh. But anyway, for incels. <laughs> yeah. How about that? <laughs> I think. I think also something, and this doesn't extend to just them, but I do think that uh, if you're a victim, and if you feel as though you're a victim of certain things, then the accountability is way less. You yeah. at least feel like you're the good guy. Ba bad guys are never the victim of anything. Mm -hmm. They're always the cause. Yeah. And so in that traditional narrative setting, I think it's easier to feel like a victim. But then if you start to succeed, then you might start to view yourself as a bad guy. So you basically create an unending scenario where you're always losing. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie watches a lot of murder content, uh -huh. like a lot. Basically anything that involves a murder she's into. Yep. And it's a, it's a common trend both in the media and in people that murder their girlfriends or wives, which happens a lot in this world for some reason. It's a big problem in Australia. Yeah, yeah. Stephanie was telling me about some horrific Australia shit. Yeah, they keep doing it. Um, a little whoopsie there, yeah, but... Uh, just keep on doing it. It's a it's a recurring theme where, like, both both the media oh, and digital frame is like, I was so heartbroken that I had to do this. And, like, if only this woman had paid me this attention. It's just such a recurring thing. It's weird. Ooh, the star of torment. There was this one guy who killed his entire family because he got laid off from work and didn't want to tell them. I mm -hmm. shouldn't have laid him off. They took his pride it's away. It's true. Uh, so he killed them because he was so embarrassed about it and then fled. And he was on, like, America's Most Wanted for a really long time. And uh, his next wife, because he, like, established an entirely new family after getting rid of the first one, found out because they were watching America's Most Wanted and his mm. face showed up. Mm. And they couldn't find him for a really long time because it had been like 20 years or so, I think. And they finally were like, he'd probably have glasses. So they drew him with glasses and that was the moment where his new wife was like, holy fuck. Damn. Yep. There was, uh, yeah, Stephanie was telling me about a pretty sweet Australian murder. There's this dude, high school oh. teacher. <laughs> well, um, <okay>. Word <laughs> choice. Yeah. Uh, he, his wife didn't have a driver's license. Was like, really kind, really loved her home life, basically. Was like super into like decorating and raising kids and all that. And then one day she just disappeared. And then two days later, one of his students moved into the house. Uh. Two days. And everybody's like, this makes no sense. Like her parents, the his, his ex-wife's parents, probably ex at this point, ex-wife's parents were talking to the police and they were like, no, she loved her family. Why would she just up and leave like that? And the husband was like, yep, she just left. Well, we gotta move on now, I guess. And the police. Look at this teenager I got. Yeah, got a new sweet teenager. All right, she's your new mom now. You know, we got to move on sometime. And the police looked into him and they were just like, yeah, guess there's nothing going on here. I guess she just left. And that was it. That Ooh. was it. So Wait, that's so cool. it's a currently Wait, so unsolved still... mystery? I think so. What I happened think to the they concluded that she just left. <laughs> the dude's just still out there. I think he actually traded up to another teenager since then. So, or trade it down? How does that work? I, uh, been watching How to Catch a Predator for the first time ever. Hell yeah! Uh, I hadn't seen it before, okay. you know, maybe two weeks oh, ago. Oh, Lana, it's we weird got... that people are, like, I know someone else who has also recently discovered it. What? And, it's like, went down. wild. It's, really, yeah. it's, a, it's amazing. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. I love it. There's I no, think... there's no more righteous kill than to catch a predator. I mean, it's, I find it really funny that they'll sit them down and they'll be like, so, yeah. oh, they make uh, them sweat. Uh, you great. said this. And then they'll be like, you're free to leave. And then they wait five seconds and they then they're out there and they get tackled the and tased. Yeah. Like, Jesus Christ. Fuck yeah. And then they sweat them out in the trailer. Uh, Love it. It's something about watching them read their own dirty texts and have to respond to it. 
But thinking about it, if someone read me my dirty texts, I would react the exact same way. Yeah, that's true. Right? Well, it's that's because true. you're in a under any mindset. context, I'd be like, oh god. Well, uh-huh. you when you're in that mindset, it's almost like you you what's the word? There's a word for it where you mentally divide the sections of your personality into different people. So when you're a normal person, you don't tell yourself that you're also that person. You totally well, yeah, are, it's like or when, it's in there somewhere. When but you yeah. finish masturbating and the pawn's still playing, and you're like, Jesus yeah. Christ! Oh, oh lady, God! No. Respect yourself, please. <laughs> Yeah, but only five minutes ago. Yeah, it's a, uh, I don't know, that's a really fascinating how how people can divide their personalities out and tell themselves they're still good people even though they murder their wives. I mean, the guy who killed his whole family because he got laid off seemed to just be like, it would have been too embarrassing. All right, I'll, I'll find a new family. They would, yeah, he did them a favor actually. Uh, prevent. He prevented them from losing respect for him, which would have been the worst thing for I them, know, I'm sure. But it's, that seems like such an insane murder because it's not... Like a passionate one. It's not like he was angry. I mean, he has to be a sociopath, right? And then he was just like, mm, no, I yeah. won't tell them. I care about their thoughts too much. I don't want them to think ill of me, so I will murder them. It's. I mean, it's all about how the human mind is desperately always trying to protect itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. There's an incredible set of defense mechanisms. Not not even physical. Yes! Yes! Oh, cool. Um, not even physical, because obviously the human body doesn't want to be destroyed. But even mental, yeah, it has to protect its own self-image. Yeah. Man, we're all just a bunch of crazy apes running around that's shooting why, s- sparks out of lasers. I, I think tritons. that's why empathy is so difficult. Hmm. It involves removing yourself from your own headspace and trying to plant yourself in someone else's. Yeah. But it's also so important because it's the only thing that keeps us from ripping each other's faces off. I, I'm, I think I've said this on a podcast before, but I'm very empathetic. I have a lot of empathy for other people, uh, but almost none else. for myself. Also really, uh, well, really humble, it turns out. I don't know if you technically well, but can. I think it's a good sure. thing. It is a very yeah. good thing. Like, I, I can, like, if someone's sad, I'll be like, oh, no. And I care a lot, but then if something bad happens to me, I don't really care. Yeah. That's well, because if it happens to you, I guess it's just something that happened. But if it happens to someone else, then theoretically you view it as an event of sorts. Hmm. Maybe. Do you think, Alana, do you think you're worthy of the same amount of concern that you give to others? That's yeah. a pretty deep question for a gameplay. I think that I just like when it happens to me, I just don't, I just don't care. Hmm. Like whatever, that's fine. No, oh, that I dude just exploded well, on the wall. Yeah. Anyway, what? I, it could be, it could theoretically be you're you're more familiar with your ability to cope. Yeah, maybe with life because you've obviously lived it, <laughs> and so maybe you presume that other people are less capable. That could be true. Um. So it could be uh, actually in a f- reverse flip. It could be a horrifically egotistical yeah. thing. You you look down on every other human being. I think being. everyone else is weak. You view everyone as some sort of like uh, corgi, <laughs> whose back is gonna <laughs> go out when it's help. eight years old. Maybe maybe. That's something that I've been I've been trying to revolutionize my thought process on. That like getting help or asking for assistance does not imply weakness. That mm-hmm. it can mm-hmm. just be a logistics thing. That every human has limits, except me, of course. But yeah, well, most yeah. people do. You you want other people to ask for help, yeah? Not you huh? ask for help. Is that, that you want you Ow! want more people to ask you for help? Is what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> Look in the mirror. Please ask me for help. That'd be cool. Uh, okay. I don't need no help. What I got a, do you think got an are? orb launcher. Those guys are basically shooting like Halo needles at you. Yeah. Like, and just like Halo, aggressive. the needles are useless. How dare you, I sir? am too strong. Oh, How whatever. Dare you? you can outrun a needler. Ugh. Anything that you can outrun in a game is, is stupid. Ridiculous. You can just run in a direct line and it never hits you. Anytime I played Halo, I rarely got any kills from far away. The, the methodology was basically running towards them, shooting, and then punching first. Yeah. That is a good strat. And as then as you do that weird pops. dance thing where you're both trying to punch each other. Yeah, for yeah the, the Halo Man dance. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I need the gold key. I'll find it. Don't worry. Oh, you have to get a key to open the door? Yeah. He got a silver one earlier. Yeah, I already opened that door. You guys missed it, man. It was it was all fun and lighthearted until the we figured out the audio wasn't recording. <laughs> and it was no. all incels and personal uh, insecurity. Uh, no, it was, was pretty much, it was pretty much the same that. thing, yeah. But we did right. have that one conversation about how we should remarket guns with other yeah. uses, like hammers and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, the NRA just, is really falling down on the job doing Just the job. so we get into it, just so that way we have it. We discussed that <laughs> guns need better PR because the, people always make the argument that guns don't kill people, people kill people. But that's not true of hammers necessarily because hammers have are tools. Purpose. They have a different purpose. It started because we were discussing an axe which can chop down a tree and someone's head off. 
So what we need is some better PR for guns, mm -hmm. where we show guns being used to do things that aren't kill people, which are, as of right now, its only main function. Right. Right. So, so let's like go some oops. cake mix. Stir yeah, stirring some cake mix. We want a nail. In. Shoot the bullet. Puts the nail in. Yep. Maybe chopping down a tree with a bunch yes, of. Yes, definitely want the chopping down. Use an Uzi to <laughs> yeah. chop down a tree. Um, just painting. Maybe we paint something with the maybe gun. Maybe you could mow the lawn if you're like laying down and you mowing just mowing the of, lawn. Yeah. We just need guns in everyday tasks. So that yes. way, when people say guns don't people kill people, people kill people. You can go. You're right. How am I supposed to mow my lawn? Yeah. Don't take away our guns. Yeah. You wouldn't take away our lawn mowers. Exactly. There was a. Uh, there was a story, I, I don't remember what state, I'm gonna guess Florida, but it was one of those yeah. we don't call 911 houses, okay. stand your ground house, and it caught on fire, and uh -huh. instead of calling the fire department, because that's a filthy communist service, is it really? Hold up, there are is that a perspective? subsex of people in America who are uh, against calling 911? Yeah, because it's a social service. What? I'll handle it myself. But hold on, my, my, uh, my, my understanding was almost always that people hate providing social services for others, but love receiving them themselves. Right. Well, no, well, These are people who actually are non-hypocritical about the use of social services? Yeah, well, it's, it's more of like, I don't need policemen to show up to defend my home. I have a gun. I'll okay, do it we, all myself. Yeah, but I interpret that as people that want to kill people. Is that person riding a crystal horse? Bull? He, he or a wolf? He riding some sort of crystalline entity, yes. Hell yeah! All right, sorry, magic? sorry, go ahead. No, it's all right. Uh, so yeah, instead of calling the fire department, he got out his rifle and just started shooting at the fire. So he was just unloading bullets into a fire to, I guess, shoot the fire to death? Okay, how did that go? Uh, poorly. I mean, again, this doesn't sound like known. someone who has an issue with social services. It sounds like someone who likes to shoot stuff. I mean, typically the two. One are, and the same. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be surprised how often they correlate. Have you ever have you ever gone shooting? I have in Australia, actually. It's the hex and then I did it here in uh, Salt Lake City. Lawrence, I, I'm assuming you've gone shooting, right? Oh yeah, I grew yeah. up in Texas. I know. That's I, why I assumed. I uh, God. I my dad being into old shit mm -hmm. would just go. Like, he found this group of people that just go out into the woods and sort of, like, role play like it's the 1800s. Mm -hmm. So they would just shoot off, like, black powder, or black powder rifles mm -hmm. and just sit around and play old music and, I guess, talk about how the South might rise again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That last part was kind of me, but... Um, yeah, I, I did... I shot guns out there, and they did not use ear protection because they're assholes. Yeah. And I remember uh, firing a 12-gauge shotgun slug. First of all, it was, like, so strong that, like, basically almost dislocated my shoulder because I shot, like, an idiot. How old like, are you? I was, like... I want to say... 13? Okay. It was actually a pretty cool gun. It had a 12 gauge on the bottom and like a 22 rifle on top, so it was like two barrels. Got it. And you could just load the shells, and then you there was like a little switch on the hammer to choose which one it was going to fire. Mm -hmm. Anyway, shot it. It was so loud that it basically flashbanged me. Like I, I, uh -huh. I couldn't think right for yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I hit the target, and my dad was like, "Is that what you were aiming for?" And I was like, "I'm." And he was like that, and I was like staring, and my eyes could see the hole in the paper, mm -hmm. but I was just like, I, what's happening right now? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that probably probably uh. did something to me. Yes! <laughs> well, he's better now. Yeah. You only killed 95% of the people, though. And you only found one of five secrets, Lawrence. I know. You're going to have to go back and do all these levels again. I will, and, and I will enjoy it. Holy crap. School? I'm in the infinite plane of arcane magics. I'm going to go into this rock and shoot some shit in there. Um, yeah, no, gu gun ranges are much better. <laughs> they give you ear protection. Yeah, yeah I actually, uh, the time that I went in Salt Lake City, I was shooting a documentary sort of thing with a company shooting? called Silence. Sounds like, yeah, it sounds like the documentary was hey. shooting you. Uh, where we were testing the way that guns in video games work versus guns in real Got life. Yeah, yeah. And part of it was that uh, in, you know, Call of Duty or whatever, often if you put a silencer on a weapon, oh. it, it means that it doesn't shoot as far or yeah. accuracy goes yeah, down, yeah. where the opposite is actually true. Uh -huh. Yeah. It was also just like debunking myths that silences are silent. Silent, yeah, that they're there in order to like make you like a hitman style assassin who will silently kill people, yeah. where really it's actually just to protect your ears. I like I like the idea. Whoever I, I've thought about that recently. I don't know why. I was playing a game with a silencer, I guess. But uh, the first guy to come up probably in a movie with the sound of a silenced weapon. Oh, the chirp. Yeah, there's like. Pew, 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 pew. Or whatever, or the guy. I like Shit. when people create, manifest their own weapons physics, yeah. or just any physics really, for the sake of entertainment. Like the sound a plane makes when it lands on a runway. Oh, the scourge. Yeah. yeah, is it something completely <gasps> manifested for film? Yeah, because there are a bunch of shots of planes landing and there is no sound. Yeah, that doesn't make a sound. 
Um, yeah, that stuff is fascinating that you can have a, a full understanding of something based on the way it has to be shot for a movie yeah. and not how it actually is in real life. Yeah. Um, Are they saying shit at me? So I always I like thinking about the first person who made a silencer. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the first time I like remember learning that sound really distinctly was Goldeneye. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You hear it so much. PBK. There but was a. Uh, that means it was it, that it oh. isn't a licensed sound. The chirp. The do. It's not like a Star Wars blaster or a Lord of the Rings era. Yeah. I feel like it always sounds the same. What? I mean, maybe someone just that wasn't. Right. Maybe. Because it's more of a cough. It's like a thump. Yeah. Uh, not really a musical chirp. I, yeah. I always Boy, like that, that cool. and the thing when someone goes, I need to kill this person silently, so I'll put a pillow over their face and then put the gun against yeah. that, so that way there's like no that would flash. Help at all. Yeah. So I always thought that, uh, maybe I'm being too generous here, but I always thought that was to prevent splatter. So that, like, if you hold the pillow, the bullet goes through the pillow and their brain, like, explodes, but it doesn't get blood and guts all over the walls. And then you can just wrap up the body in a sheet or walk away, and it's, mm. it's just less obvious. It's definitely been used to silence death. I Speaking of in murders... Movies. Uh, Stephanie yet again. There was a there was a murder where somebody like made their own silencer out of a can of tennis balls. Okay. Mm-hmm. They basically found a way to attach it. And is it wait, is it, this real life or is this? No, this is very movie. much okay. real life. The, the way they figured two. it out is because <laughs> there were like tennis fibers on the bullet okay. that went into the person. That's pretty cool. Damn. Oh, that's oh, cool. Perfect. Oh, wow. That. Nice. Oh, oh. oh, less nice. Okay, good. But yeah, it's apparently you can just Google some stuff, find out all about murders. Yeah, you definitely yeah. can. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. Yeah, forty-nine health. I wanted I'm to okay. look up the other day, but I wasn't sure how to Google search for it. Now, ways that people have died on the set of a film, like like Twilight Zone. Yeah, like Captain Papa Landis. <sighs> uh, like, what are some examples of the ways that people have died while shooting? Uh, uh, the there's stunt the, yeah, there's the, the Resident stunt, Evil. Lady. Uh, someone stunt got woman. shot in their death scene in a movie. Oh yeah, um, Bruce Lee. Brandon Bruce Lee. Lee. Yeah. Brandon Brandon Lee. Lee. You're right, sorry. Brandon, sorry. Bruce Lee got harvested by ancient Japanese and then Chinese spirits. Brandon Lee replaced him for the rest of the movie, right? What's that? Brandon Lee replaced him for the rest of the movie as well? No. No, he was too young. Brandon Lee was like 10. Someone replaced him. Yeah. Well, it, it was just they, some dude with really dark sunglasses. Yeah. They, yeah. Have you seen uh, Game of Death? It's bad. That's the, that's the movie he was shooting basically around when he died, and it's pretty remarkable. Mm. It's It's... It's so good when Bruce Lee is in it, and so bad when Bruce Lee is not. Ugh. But they were like, it's like just a bunch of people going like, "What do you think, Bruce?" And then it's the back of some generic Asian guy's head going like, <laughs> like thumbs up, and you're like, "Cool." Yikes! And then there's like two shots where they tried to superimpose his face on the body. Oh, looks real bad. Not good. Not good. I just love that like Bruce Lee died, and they were like, "Oh man, ah." Well, Maybe supposedly 30 minutes his later. family I don't, I don't, was like he would have wanted to. I, I don't oh, really think it released. was right away, honestly. Okay, yeah. In defense of it, I don't think it was immediate. Okay. Yeah, and it, again, I'm because, pretty sure his family said they wanted them to still release it. So. If I recall, the ter- the order of events is Bruce Lee makes a bunch of movies in China, um, gains popularity, uh, and then films enter the dragon as this crossover mainstream U.S. crossover. Releases in China, goes gangbusters. I think there's some health up on the, the straight ahead there. Yeah. Um, uh, releases, you. releases, Enter the Dragon in China, goes gangbusters, and then in preparing for its release in America, I'm pretty sure that's when he dies. Mm. Oh. So I, I don't even think he was alive for its success. In uh, this is based Mama. off my uh, like grade seventh grade book report that I I'll did. I'll take on Bruce Lee. it. But yeah, is there anyone else who's died uh, while filming? I mean, I'm sure there must be. I mean, I again, like Lawrence said, for that. probably stuntmen, famous Stunt people, stuntmen, yeah. mm, not so much. Brandon Lee, and then the kids yeah. and the actor from uh, Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone. Usually they die between movies because they're on a cocaine binge or something. Did Twilight Zone still get released? Yeah. It did. Oh yeah. Yeah. They just didn't use. And the, here's the, here's the worst part. Mm. That was the alternate ending. They oh already had god. it done. It was done, baby. Oh god. That movie was done. And then they were like, "Eh, what about a different ending?" Oh shit. Cuz it it ends a- Adam should be here to describe this cuz his favorite director <laughs> is John Landis. It, yeah. Um but basically, it's this racist, bigoted guy who then through the tile- Twilight Zone gets forced through a bunch of historical scenarios where mm-hmm. racism, but he's on the other side of it, so okay. he has to endure um, and then it ends with him thinking that he's back, but realizing he's actually on a train to a concentration camp. 
Oh, yikes. and so it's like he's back in his normal time, but his friends like come out of the bar that oh. he was like being racist in, and then they, they, they don't see him, and he's in the train like please, please, and mm. then it says that it's going to the, going to, Auschwitz. Yikes! But then they're like, ah, that's a, that's a downer. Let's film another one <laughs> where he's that. in let's, Vietnam. Let's murder some kids. And he runs away for some reason. And he he decides that racism is bad, and so he he rescues two Vietnamese children uh, during, like, basically oh. risks his own life, and then that's the scene, the extra scene that they filmed where he is running through a Vietnam war scene, and uh -huh. a helicopter, an actual helicopter, falls on them. Yeah. God. Yep. Good stuff. Yeah. There was an interview I read this morning with Eddie Murphy Oh yeah. Uh, regarding coming to America. Did you see it? I, I, I saw some excerpts from it, yeah. Yeah, there was a... Uh, that's John Landis as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, there was a apparently this was post Twilight Zone when John Landis was like Hollywood toxin because he murdered children. He did go to jail. Um, he did. Yeah. Oh, did he? Yeah. I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, it was an, from an issue a 1990 issue of Playboy where they were talking with Eddie Murphy about it, and he was like, "Yeah, I kind of stuck my neck out for him because I liked him," and then he was a total total cunt to me mm. multiple times during that production. Apparently, he was like just becoming unhinged. Mm -hmm. He like he needed control, and he could tell that he was on the way out, so he was just getting really weird about. Just sort of being shitty to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty harrowing. Man, did I'm glad John I'm not Landis an actor. Did John Landis direct anything off to Twilight yeah. Zone? Oh, yeah. He still did? He wow. kept going. He, Damn. I mean, he did, if I recall, Beverly Hills Cop 3. I get it confused with John okay. Hughes, who did Baby's Day Out. Well, John Hughes did a lot more than Baby's Day Out. Well, I mean, sure. <laughs> but let's be honest. Only one of those movies matters. No, yeah. John Landis kept working. Wow. He was Blues Brothers, right? Yeah. Yeah, John I mean, Landis, like, watching some of his films, I'm like, holy fuck, this guy was insane. Some of the stunt work he did in Blues Brothers was not cool for the time. You know, like, human beings just getting tossed around. I mean, John Landis was essentially... I think the whole Landis family is perfectly sane. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know anything about the mom. <laughs> <laughs> she might be okay. Um, John Landis was, like, the original big-budget comedy director. Yeah. Okay. Like, he would do big stuff. Except I think Ivan Reitman's better, in my opinion. Boom. Boomed him. <laughs> is, is this a puzzle? It is. You gotta hit the switches in order so the... Shit. Wait, does it time out? The last one did. Oh, yeah, there yeah, it is. It's just a really long, long time. Okay. So Game's really should, old. Shouldn't you start... Use all your rams to load I guess I have on to... You should side, start right? furthest from the other... Yeah, so that yeah. way you win, by the time you circle, you're back on the other side and you can... Wait. Is this no. guy gonna come down? Oh, wait. Oh, I, it's do a I have to portal hole. that? It is a portal hole. Oh, you just Ooh. need to get them up so you can grab the gold key. Yeah, but how do we get up there? How do I fall into portal hole? Oh, oh. do that before I kill myself. Oh. 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 Oh, they're binary switches. Okay. Are they? Does that one go up after a while? Okay. Yes. All right. All right. All right. I get it. 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 Oh, this game asks you to use your mind, not just your brawn. Yes. I must become the ultimate warrior. Hey, I'm, oh, I'm going to be I'm going to become the ultimate warrior. You're going to be jealous of how ultimate I am. I can't mm. wait for you to you got get it. He's going to do it. Can't wait for your jealousy. Uh, Shit. I can make the jump, I bet. I bet I can do it. Watch this. A warrior would be able to War make the jump. Missed it. Hmm. Oh, only just, though. Yeah. That was... Hmm. I'm more curious you go about the other you get I think you go the other way. I think you start at that end. Yeah? I, I think, think you yeah, I think you're right. Start at that end. Oh. Oh, you don't? That was the wrong end? Yeah, I mean. That was bad end? Yeah. Because you. Oh, no, that's fine. I guess you know. Hey, you oh! oh! Yeah, I guess as long as you loop it either way. Yeah. I just gotta be faster with my yeah. hops. Here we go. Gotta crouch. Get ready to go. I'm ready. Alright. You got it. You got it. You got it. This music is cheering me on. Boom. Yeah, this is what's killing all the time. Boom. Boom. Shoot! Oh, oh, good recovery. I didn't so, all right, so oh, it's a give it a beat, maybe. Right? You press it, wait, wait three seconds, then run. So press that first button there, that count to three, then run, and touch the other two Well, buttons. the problem is is this one, It's the last dropping one. too fast. Yeah, so I know, but it's dropping based off the time you're hitting the second button, right? Oh, is it? I oh, think so. It? I think that corresponds to the second. So one... Two, oh, I see three. what you mean. Yeah, now yeah, go. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Hoo! There we go. Perfect. Ah. Ultimate warrior. Hell yeah. All right. Now I got a key. Oh, things. Nothing is free in the world of what's this called? A medieval. Yeah, there you go. Got More it. More Christard warriors. It. 
You've come to the wrong realm, Chris nope. Darg. That one guy rode off the edge. I'm a big fan of those crystal boars or whatever they, they are. They're cute. They're like angry little Pokemons. Yeah. Look at them thinking they're contributing. Aw. They're trying their best. Uh-oh. That sounds like a bad thing. Nah, just more snakes. Instead. Oh my god. Oh lord. <laughs> oh, those crystal snakes didn't wait, know wait, what wait, happened wait, wait. to them. They never will. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. What are those supposed to be? Oh, crystal bugs? Uh, just some yeah, kind of bug? Like bugs. My favorites. It's a cool fucking stuff, dude. It's been a long time, yeah. I remember when bugs, like, when I was a kid, I want to say bugs compromised about 35% of my active thoughts. Just thinking about bugs or interacting with bugs. Hmm. Doesn't, I, had, really a, so I had a period of time where I, I thought about bugs a fair bit in my life. I was also just outside a lot, so... Maybe I haven't gotten mine yet. Yeah, you'll get there. Your bug face? When you hit puberty. <laughs> I'm still waiting. <laughs> That's gonna hit you like a truck, man. The later it is, the harder it hits. Could you imagine mm. how lucky human beings would be if they got a second puberty Dude, and not I, the shitty one like menopause. Yeah, that's what menopause is. <laughs> I'd be so good at puberty now. I was gonna say, like, if you knew that you're gonna hit like 36 or whatever and then get a second God, huge blast of testosterone. So oh. that's sort of what HRT is. Like, oh, yeah. people oh, yeah, who transition yeah. basically go through puberty again and yeah. it's wild. Yeah. God, but you, you have to be better at it. Like, I've learned so many lessons the first time. I'd have all my Lincoln Park ready to go. I'd have like... <laughs> a milk jug to come into. It's gonna take a while to fill it up. You know? I had a friend who transitioned. I think she was about thirty-two, and when she started, yeah. Mm -hmm. and the conversations that come up are very funny because they're things that most girls would have experienced when they were ten. Oh yeah. That she's just now experiencing. So she'd be like, "A man said something to me while I was walking down the street." And you're like, "Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. that Aww. will happen." Or like, this bra's uncomfortable. You're like, yes, welcome. Aww, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, that must be nice. It is very cute because it's like having like a full grown human that you know very well who's just suddenly like experiencing little girl things. I think it's probably, it's similar to what I imagine, except uh, unfortunately Ow. not Shit. as well accepted by society, but like deciding to go back to college. You know, you see that like granny. She's yeah. like, I'm gonna go to college. You know what's probably super fun for her? college <laughs> and she probably got a lot more out of it than I got when I didn't know what the fuck was going on and with you my didn't life. really want to be that you just felt pressured to yeah I mean I was pretty good about knowing that sharks? I had a good situation those look like crystal sharks the crystal skarks oh my god I love that yeah they're in the, they're in ceiling water oh, oh is that a secret? secrets oh Tight. Hell yeah. I am the ultimate champion. Did you pick that up? Uh, yeah, I don't know that transitioning is fun. No, it's not fun. But, but some parts of that are like you're learning new stuff all mm -hmm. the time and you get to share it with stuff like that with women that you just couldn't do previously when you wanted to. And I feel yeah. like there'd be, there'd be parts of that that would be fun. I feel like as a human being, you're sometimes better equipped to handle the societal rigors of growing up when you're already an adult. Yeah. I've always wanted to get a period just so I can I can feel the rush of like watching Steel Magnolias and having it just devastate me or something. It's real bad. It's not good. <laughs> I mean, not even the emotional part of it. I don't I, get that. I so. understand the instability would be frustrating, but if you well, if it's you know that it you're hurts and it's if you feel unclean. Oh yeah, I guess there's, there's like there's almost no upside. Like it doesn't doom. make me emotional. And and then if you live in but a like, household of women, my sister was like fucking mental. Michelle Branch music doesn't just like take you to another plane of existence. No, or something. you just like I just sometimes want shitty food. Also the wolves. The wolves? Yeah. Think the about wolves the wolves. Oh, yeah. They come knocking. They come after you. Yeah, the yeah, sharks and stuff. those wolves off. Yeah, you can't even go swim in the ocean. No. If they get a whiff, you're done. I mean, you can. It's just a real risk. Oh man. You gotta embrace it. Well, the danger He's makes it fun. shock repellent, though, right? you know. Oh, I'm in water. Cool. Crystal water. This game rules. I'm Is this the first planes. water level? Ah! Oh, fuck. Oh, Chris Dark. Hey, you're chomping me. I love them. Don't I'm go chomping. too low, otherwise you'll probably yeah, fall through oh, the, right, the water fall. surface floor. I've played inside. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> have you also played inside? I have, <laughs> yes. Classic inside joke. Thanks. <laughs> oh, James. Oh, my God. Oh! What a what a joke! Bam! I wish I could be clever enough to make word plays like that. You do make word plays like that. I do, but it's I'm gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It's ninety percent of the time it's entirely accidental. If you just word vomit enough, it, it, eventually something will sound like a joke. That's true. That is true. That is true. Yeah. But I also talk a lot more than most people, so oh, if you if you compare the ratios, you're yeah, more likely to make more jokes. It's the same. Damn, the secret of comedy just just unlocks. Just for talk me. a lot. Yeah. yeah. Start talking early, and talk a lot. 
All those times you were sitting there silently, Lawrence, because you didn't want to make a fuss or make a scene or whatever that is. That was comedy. Those are jokes dying on the vine. Yeah. Damn it. So just do it, but do everything very exaggerated. So be extremely obnoxious because Mm -hmm. someone will find that funny and it's probably a six year old. Yeah, Mm -hmm. just violating societal norms of any kind becomes instant. As loud as you can, go full Jim Carrey. So James, I've always been curious about this. Yeah. Given given your your love of the craft of comedy. Yes. Um as a as a young lad, uh-huh. uh, I discovered very early my passion for video games, and that translated into sort of a, so, something of an academic study of it. Uh-huh. So I played a lot of video games I didn't really care about, yeah. just because I wanted to know what they were what they were like. Yeah, yeah. Did you do that with comedy? Did you just watch a lot of comedic material to sort of get the structure and understand the legacy of it? I mean, yeah. I mean, you just you have to immerse yourself in it. I think there's like, you know, you always the people with tragic lives or whatever. They're like, oh, my parents died when I was three in a car accident and I remember all of it but I'm also the funniest person in the room it's because they had to develop comedy to protect themselves mm. from the trauma of events okay that wasn't me luckily but I think the other uh, the other side of that is like oh you have funny parents who are always surrounding you in comedy or encouraging you to watch comedies or something so yeah I would say 90% of what I watched was action or comedy mm-hmm. and then ultimately you just decipher from there you don't you have no threshold for good or bad really you just consume it all that and then sense. that's that's all you really need oh, cool <laughs> this game is cool i'm sorry i made fun of you mostly that's okay most people apologize for making fun of me in the end boss fight i don't think, think? i think boss fights no. are contained uh, like they're just one up. level with a bunch of weapons and then a big circular chamber you did it's get more nice horse boys no alana i'm used to i'm used to being a tragic figure really in this in this world it took a long time for me to get over it, but I think I've done a pretty job. <laughs> this is the mo- biggest tragedy you could come up with right now. Yeah. Is him dying. Dying in a medieval. Those stupid posts on the wall stuck me. I couldn't do the old one, too, of running backwards and shooting. Mm. Classic move. Yeah, I learned it. I learned it in my my Gaming. my young academic days yeah. playing Quake. Yeah, of course, yes. Gaming 101. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you were playing Forsaken. Yes. I fucking loved Forsaken. Forsaken of course you did. Oh my god, I loved that game so much. That's the game such as the is one of the biggest baits in Switches. Oh, because there's just a crying girl on the cover. Yeah, and then the is game there? you play like dirty the, biker dude. I don't at know least, that I ever saw the cover. At least in America, it yeah, was Forsaken Girl. Yeah, oh. it's like some chick. Yeah, that's nice. And so. that's from earlier. Uh, she's got <laughs> a, ta- right, that a, is a heart early, tattoo. Yeah, she's got a heart tattoo, and it looks like yeah. I have never seen that before. Did but then the game is like anything but or? that. No, I mean I, I. That's the that F one. The the planet is the one that I know. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh, we must have some. Uh, you didn't get the full full double barrel American maybe they cover. Had, yeah, maybe they had laws against falsely marketing because it doesn't make any sense. It was also in Jesus. almost every single gaming magazine. Like if yeah, you got in double page ad. EGM the between hell? any of that. Oh my God! Oh, oh wow. that's the one. The bottom one is the one that, that I knew. That has nothing the most. to do with that game. Marketing for games in the mm. 90s was awesome. What do you think the Forsaken Girl's up to now? I was just wondering. I she never saw the dead. butt one. She, she could have died. Yeah, maybe she's really good at comedy because she's dead. Uh, <laughs> this will work. Um, no. Nope. Well, probably not image oh. search. Uh, oh, yeah, probably not image. What year was that? The Forsaken there Girl. There you go. Oh, oh that's different. No, nope. uh, that's, a, that's a self-published nope. book. Hmm. Forsaken model, maybe? Forsaken. Oh, oh, okay. oh here we go. This okay. might be it. Yeah. Yes. To go there to the, to be the one Who's the cover of the game? Forsaken. Ah, she even autographed a calendar for me. What is her name? What? You got her autograph. Who is dude. she? Oh, all I can make out Donna D. What's her last name? Okay, maybe someone else knows her last name. They have some info on who she is. 64.com. Some that's picks. Take it. That's, yeah. Hot picks. This is from 1998. A fucking Oh my Google god. Roots. Something about reading something from 1998 is wild. Yeah. Holy Donna shit. D- Donna Dicciani? Dicciani? How are you? She doesn't have an, a picture. Come on. Well, we Donna. we know what to use. Fort Worth, Texas. Hell yeah. Do you think we That's can right. get her in the office and play Forsaken with her? She she grew up like 30 minutes away from where I did. So we're basically, you know. We're okay, basically. so yes. There's Donna. There she is. Wow. Where is she? Wait, that wasn't a real tattoo? Oh, you son of You lied to me. Son of a bitch. She's still acting, 2018. Wow. Can you just Google search her? I guess, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I can. Nope, nope. 
This is good background music. Uh -huh. This is Very what good. played Very in 1998 good. when I was. Oh, oh there we go. Okay, There's so some full body shots. She's straight up a model. Oh, there's model? the rest yeah. of the photo. Is that photoshopped? This? Yeah. Oh. Is there a nipple on that? No, I mean uh, that's the photo we just saw. Oh, no, there, there is a nipple. nipple on that's that. more. If that's these are the outtakes. It's a good Photoshop. Damn, Donna. Oh, is that someone's dick on it? Go back to that picture. Yeah. What? That's a thumb. Is it? That? Yeah, he's, he's holding up the. I mean. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Could be a small dick. I don't. I just I don't thought it was a weird, you. flaccid dick. Good God. Yeah. This. There, you don't even see a human being in I that game. I fully had no idea that was a thing. This is like when Jennifer Aniston filmed that topless scene for uh, the breakup, and she didn't think it was going to be used, but then it leaked. <gasps> just like what happened to Iggy Azalea, where somehow she did a nude photo shoot and then didn't consent to it. Oh. How does that happen? Yeah, she's fully posing. Iggy Azalea has gotten ground up in this world. It's not fair. Oh, there she is. Yeah, she has a bit. Well, there, she did it. Now we know, I guess. All right. Wait, is that who you're playing as in Forsaken? There's multiple characters, I thought, but yeah, you're you're just some dude on a hover bike. Yeah, I feel like you're just a man. Hmm. I what don't remember there being clothes? any women in that game at all. Uh, no. Like most '90s games, if there's one woman, it's an enemy that's been like cyberized. Except and all Jeff Force is... Gemini. Yeah, yeah, Jeff Force Gemini. And Perfect Doc. Very progressive. Joanna Dark was pretty cool. Yeah, she ruled. And then they like took all away all of her cool stuff for Perfect Dark Zero. They taught her we how to talk roll. About that. Let's make her younger and zipper her shirt down a little bit and make her way less awesome. Oh, You're gonna no! die. Fuck. The Damn. fantasy of Forsaken fades yeah. away, <laughs> and all we're left with is a medieval. Cold and medieval. I would love to see if I can find Forsaken somewhere. I oh, think it's, it's come up. I think it's on Steam or it's something. It's on Google really? Games. They've remastered it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. I think we've gotten it on the Steam Roulette. Should or we just switch wheelhouse. and play Forsaken? No. Oh. Because, oh. <laughs> I mean, that's another hard I just didn't understand. Game. Did they build those tubes in the future? What's the deal? I think they were abandoned subway tunnels or something. They it's look like, more complex than that. I remember reading about it in Nintendo Power. Again, video game academia. Uh, yeah, it was like some, it was some post apocalyptic future where there were all these, like, uh, tunnels that were then were now filled with like a bunch of uh stuff that scavengers would go in and find so you were one of the like tech scavengers that would go in and pick up treasure and stuff stare at chicks who were all sweaty and nice cool. yeah yeah video games are cool what do you think was a better cover for a game that or the hillbilly watching the You're spaceship go by exactly what you were talking about uh, one of the best covers ever. Wait, hold on. Yeah, more specific. <laughs> Not everything is video games. What? There it is. Yeah. Yeah. You play that game, Alana. Very good. Yeah. What? I what, think I have played it. What do you think? This I mean, game you probably is? have, but. Yeah. What kind of game do you think this is? Okay, if I didn't know, I would guess that it was. Mm, like a destroy all aliens type. Not bad. Like a satire it's game. That. Yeah. It's a, it's a shoot em up. How do you think the devs felt? I don't know, they were probably all Japanese, they didn't know. Chemco. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of weird marketing stunts that uh, companies pulled in when they didn't had no faith in the video game buying public. It was basically like, let's put tits on it or just like do something weird. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I well, love desperation. That one was weird because if I recall, there was a commercial for the game, which is him like sitting there like really? telling an old, I think, unless I'm crazy, I'm pretty sure it was him telling like an old story and then these things go flying by and he's like, oh, well. <laughs> How do you like that? It's, it's like, a, wait, that just means somebody did like the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, and they're like, we could make that a commercial for a game. Kind of, yeah. There's an old man. Now suddenly there's pirates. I think the narrative of that is like you're supposed to be going to his dream. Yeah, he's dreaming of pirates. Mm -hmm. Why is a Creole man dreaming of pirates? I think there was just a period of time. Oh! oh. I guess who, you can dream about who whatever. Who did that? What is that? Know. What is it? Oh. The squib, squib trailer tricks. Oh, Shit. Yeah, I feel like there was a period of time where a lot of media was, it was a dream. Uh -huh. Yeah, because writing is hard. Alice in Wonderland. Bob Newhart show. Alice in Wonderland was like an opium trip. Whoa. But it's still a dream, I right? I guess you're right, yeah. That's fair. Um, <laughs> All of the Bob Newhart show? Wait, I've never watched it. Is that how does Lost End? Can not, someone tell me how Lost not Ends? Not the Bob Newhart show, per se, but Newhart, which oh. was his second show from the late 80s, early 90s, where he owned a... Uh, like a lodge, and then a bunch of hijinks came about from that. There's so many, so many TV shows I never saw. Yeah, they just, they just. I'm growing to understand that they just didn't show on my affiliates. 
Oh man! Yeah. All they showed was Andy Griffith reruns and Gomer Pyle. Hold on, did that all. guy disappear into the? He did, yeah. His he top folded of his head into himself. Yeah, <laughs> disappeared. Uh, Lawrence Alana, I don't want to give it away because I want to keep it to be our little secret just in case we do something afterwards. But I'll I'll send you something that Elise showed me the other night. Mm. That I think you guys would appreciate it. <sighs> in terms of how garbage TV can be. Great. Mm. I look forward to it. I, uh, one of the things that I'm enjoying. Ah! Oh, kaboom! Whoa. That was a very yeah, dramatic kabooms. death. Um, as much as I kind of wring my hands yeah. about, like, how, how I worry about how social media and stuff will subtly alter people's viewpoints and mm -hmm. worldviews and stuff. Yeah. Oh my god! Subtly, he says. Subtly, yeah. Well, you know, there, there's, there can be subtle things about it. You, you gotta escalate or whatever. But, man, so... I've been I've been on this kick lately. S Stephanie found this like subscription service called Night Flight, which uh -huh. was like this late night collection of music videos and weird clips from old movies that would air on like the USA Network, uh -huh. I guess in the 80s. Okay. They're still around and you can just sign up for it on the internet and just watch blocks of 80s programming complete with commercials. Cool. So you're paying for this? Stephanie is. Okay. Um, I'm into it. I'm paying for it because I uh, sometimes scratch her back while she's watching TV. Uh -huh. So, you know, we all have uh -huh. prices to pay. It's true. Uh but yeah, th people pulled n no punches back in the day. Holy crap. They would dig in there and find whatever insecurity you have and try to like lean on it as hard as they can. Oh, uh, that's the way the marketing changed because marketing used to be about utility and then it changed to insecurity. So yeah. they used to be like, this Lifestyle. skirt will last you 10 years. And then it went, this skirt will stop you from looking so fucking fat, you fat yeah. bitch. It's fun to go back in time too and see like marketing towards women because it is all... You probably need to find a man, and you probably haven't yet. Yeah. So here's how this product can help you not be such a horrendous wretch. It's wild. When they do, like, mascara, they'll be like, it'll make your eyelashes fuller and longer. And it's supposed to, the whole purpose is just to make you like, <gasps> are my eyelashes thin and short? My eyelashes are <laughs> shit. Oh, You're God. probably thinking, are my eyelashes thin and short? <laughs> well, the answer is yes. yes. <laughs> the answer is absolutely yes, and that's why you're so lonely and no one likes you. Yep. Oh, but there was a good period of time where marketing was just about the appeal yeah. of the thing. But then... I know, like when the war happened, and women, can more all, ho all the housewives were really fucking depressed. Yeah, uh, they changed marketing to be focused on how long something would take. So they'd be like, "You want to bake this cake? It'll take seven hours." So that women would have something to do. Mm. They're like, "All right, I'll buy that seven-hour cake because I'm fucking bored." That's interesting. I a lot of like, uh, whenever um, it's like, I also watched a lot of advertisements from the 30s and 40s, and a lot of them actually focus on, or the ones that I've seen at least. Focus on how these new appliances, first of all, it's all about convincing your husband to buy it. Mm -hmm. So the, the ad would basically be, ladies, here's how to approach your shitty husband and get him to be okay with spending money on this thing. So that was step one. Mm -hmm. Then step two was, and here's all of the ways it can save you time so you don't have to be in the kitchen cooking all day. And the interesting thing was, like, that was kind of a double-edged sword because once women had free time... Then they started reading and getting jobs and developing autonomy. Got him. That I was a big whoopsie. I regret all of it. Because a lot of the advertising was like Never focusing on the freedom that this like refrigerator would give you. They didn't know that that freedom would lead them to want to, you know, vote. Whoops. Ugh. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have done that. I always liked advertising from the late 19th century, because it's all basically like, do you need a new pair of pants? Try. Oh yeah. Jo Josiah slacks now with cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is like. <laughs> Canned <laughs> apples, now with cocaine. <laughs> We've added just a pinch of opium for that yeah. wonderful taste. Oh man. Are yeah. you suffering from headaches? Well, we don't have a cure for that, but buy cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Have you considered cocaine? You probably have. Just a <laughs> pinch of mommy's little Here's helper. Some more. Cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was also I God. So there's an opium epidemic now, but there was one before. Like everyone they discovered morphine before they had any other kind of painkiller. So in the Civil War, that's all they had. That's it. So if you, if like anyone got hurt, they would just shoot them up with morphine and then like give them little morphine ampules. And then and they're just it. addicted to morphine. Yeah. yeah, and then everyone was addicted to morphine after the Civil War. There, there was like a huge black market for it and stuff. So I don't know. It's funny how history repeats itself. <laughs> <laughs> the classics never go out of style, really. Oh, boss fight. Whoop. The hexed passage nice has walk. been traveled. Ninety-five percent again. Ouch, ouch. Scholar though, that's good. What does that mean? Oh, uh, you read the things. Yeah, That's right. I, I found all of the uh, lore entries of which there were none. Is this a boss fight? Maybe. No, there weren't not, any lore entries. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't if look not, like a boss fight. If not, we should probably okay. 